My research partner is Devon Rape Crisis and Sexual Abuse Services. And although I'll not be talking about sexual violence specifically, I want to draw your attention to the context of my research. And so please know that if you want to leave at any time, please do so. I'm in my second year of a PhD. I did my first year full time and I've recently gone to part time. I'm based at Exeter University in Cultural Geography and my second university is the University of West of England, where I'm at the Centre for Fine Print Research. I did my master's at UWE in multidisciplinary printmaking. My research is looking at trauma informed practices, specifically for artists working in communities. I'm researching what trauma informed practice may look like for artists. Much of my research so far has been reading around trauma. This is a vast area and uh, I'm focusing on trauma around sexual violence and domestic abuse. I focus on chronic trauma, meaning trauma that happens daily, for example, domestic abuse and compounded trauma, where people's trauma is made significantly worse by the responses of society, for example, victim blaming or the inadequacies of the justice system to respond to people affected by rape. I'm a visual artist and a printmaker. My primary focus for my research is not on what I make, however, but it's focused on how I make. What this means is that I'm interested in the dynamics between myself and the others involved in my art making. In this regards, I'm focused on the part of my practice that is participatory. So, as I mentioned, my research partner for my PhD is Dem Rape Crisis and Sexual Abuse Services. I worked with them during my master's and this was the motivating factor for doing this PhD. I wanted to work with them again, but in a much deeper way. My master's was in multidisciplinary printmaking and there was some reflection during the art project I did with service users, but I wanted the opportunity to learn how to research and how to find out more. So what do I want to find out during my research project with Devon Rape Crisis and exactly what will I be doing? Firstly, I want to examine the dynamics between artist and participant, the power relations. The usual participatory or communi community arts project looks like this. The artist enters the community art project as the lead protagonist. The artist's agenda often leads the way. Even though the art project may be responding to community needs, more often than not, it's decided by others. That may be a local authority wanting to address suicide amongst men in their community. Here I'm citing an actual project in Tor Bay in 2016. Or the artist fundraisers to run a project of their interests. For example, in 2014, I fundraised for a five month artist residency in a women's refuge. The participants, no matter the altruistic motivation, are participants in the art project and they have lesser power and control. So when I came to run an art project with Demon Rape Crisis during my master's, I was already acutely aware of this power dynamic. For my master's project, I was creating portraits of service users as a means to raise awareness of sexual violence in our community. And the portraits were exhibited at the Regional Art Centre. I grappled with how to make portraits that gave the service users some measure of control over how they were seen. So I began by taking a 15 second video of the participant moving their head from one side to another. And from this video, I did 19 monotype prints of their head in various positions. I then offered up those mini portraits to them and they were invited to turn over as many of them as they liked for whatever reason and without justification. I then stitched together their arrangement. I was aware throughout the project that I was working with women who were recovering from a, an abuse of power. How could I behave in such a way that respected their power and gave them power and not only to make choices over how they were seen, but also to withdraw at any point. Uh, the final portraits from that MA project now sit in the offices at Dem Rape Crisis. And um, these are just some of them here that you can see. And you can see 
that um, what's really interesting is um, how they vary with how many are turned over and which and which ones are turned over. My proposed research project for my PhD continues to involve participants in the making of their portraits, but with several distinct differences. The purpose this time is not for public display or public awareness raising. Therefore, the final portraits are not big pictures. They will be concertina artists books, pocket sized. The artwork will belong to the participant and therefore they can choose who they want to share it with. Through this art project, I hope to reveal the dynamics between myself as participatory artist and the service users as participants. I'll be recording observations and reflections in an autoethnographic journal and undertaking interviews with the service users. For this research, I have the following concerns and questions. How can I ensure their fully informed consensual participation? Where is the line between being a participant and being a co-maker or a collaborator? Why is a balanced power dynamic important? How does the way I practice as an artist affect the participants' recovery and rebuilding of their lives from trauma? And how do I ensure a safe environment that enables creative and therefore inherently risk-taking behaviour? I received um, ethics approval from my department in February 2020 and had my first participant volunteer the week before the March lockdown last year. But I have not yet begun the research project itself, not only because face-to-face -face research isn't currently allowed, um, but also because Devon Rape Crisis and Sexual Abuse Services have had major changes at their organisation. The pandemic has meant a greater demand for their services and they've had a change of CEO. Um, at the moment, my plans remain in the air, but I feel positive that I'll begin either an online version of the art project this spring or an in-person research uh, in the autumn. Lastly, I'm going to tell you about the proposed artist book portrait itself. The structure, content, materials of the artist book portrait are informed by my understandings of trauma. I have chosen to use a type of concertina form as a metaphor for recovery from trauma. Trauma causes disorder, chaos, unknowable, unspeakable emotions. With this format, when the book is opened, its pages fall and concertina in multiple directions, almost taking on a life of its own. The book appears fragmented and chaotic, but then as it is laid down and opened out fully, the pages drift into a singular image. To heal from trauma is to be able to bear and manage once unbearable feelings and to find some clarity from chaos. The use of portraiture is a response to understanding that to recover from trauma is to be seen. Awareness of oneself is a part of trauma recovery and the opportunity be, to be seen is crucial to recovery because Trauma almost invariably involves not being seen, not being mirrored and not being taken into account. The portraits of the participants uh, will include words that they hold up. Uh, the words are significant because trauma is characterised by speechlessness. Pain's resistance to language is not simply one of its incidental or accidental attributes, but is essential to what it is. But I should say um, they don't have to include words and it may be the message is conveyed through hand gestures or, or their poses. Only when the portraits in the artist's book are laid out into a singular image can the full meaning of the words be understood. It's intended that the participants choose the text and that these words are a message for themselves. The words could be a poem, affirmation, song lyrics created by themselves or another. Thank you for listening.